Uh, good afternoon, everyone. That's true. I work at the National Technical University Ukraine and K Kyiv Polytechnic University. My presentation is related to one specific aspect related to uh, agricultural engineering, namely uh, robot uh, uh, using robots. We have different teams and scientific schools, so to say, that are working on relevant topics for agriculture. In my presentation, I am using uh, the qualifying work of my um, uh, graduate student. Uh, it was about producing um, a robot for uh, uprooting weeds. Vitaly, do I have to switch the slides or you would do that? Vitaly, it's it's up to you. Uh, so I can either switch uh, slides myself or you can start presentation off on your screen. Just uh, let me know what is better for you. I can see uh, this presentation on my screen already. It's been launched. I, ha I haven't launched my screen yet. So I would just say when it's necessary to to go to the next slide. So next slide, please. We have a vision based on which we can say that uh, weed protection uh, is usually managed via herbicides and about 95% of all agricultural land are uh, managed by herbicides and it of course contributes to less environmentally friendly qualities of this soil. So overuse of chemicals is bad for environment. For the same purpose Farmers use uh, heavy machinery, which also contributes to uh, worse uh, qualities of soil, namely its ramming. Uh, within the uh, midterm and long term horizon, we can uh, anticipate higher, even more extensive use of uh, technologies. And this would enable uh, farmers to have free hands and minds, so to say, for taking the decisions as for which uh, crop to choose, uh, where, which land plot to um, make fallow, and so on. This way, we, uh, we all together will be able to increase the efficiency of farming. In my presentation, I'm talking about uh, robots for weed protection. Next slide, please. First of all, let me say that uh, we have to talk about precision agriculture in the first place. Uh, this section of uh, knowledge is focused on maximizing profits, optimizing uh, use of all resources. On the left-hand side, you can you can see integration of uh, vertical and horizontal integration, or where we use uh, sophisticated approaches in land management on all uh, levels. On the right-hand side you can see requirements to agriculture uh, from the perspective of the industry 4.0. A lot of objectives here are uh, solved or um, fulfilled by acad academia, uh, namely universities and technical universities. We now have AI, uh, we have big data, 
and we have uh, tools for life cycle management. Next slide, please. Let me also highlight uh, the uh, significant transformation of energy consumption. In 2015, about 96% of all energy consumed in uh, transportation was non-renewable energy sources and only 4% accounted for renewables. So now by 2050, the um, relationship would, uh, the proportions would uh, change and renewables would take up to 58% in this uh, transportation sector. On the right hand side on this slide, you can see this um, picture uh, with the uh, farm system, energy independence uh, farm system. All sources of energy uh, are used for this, uh, for the purposes of such a farm, it's biomass, it's uh, wind energy, hydropower. Uh, we have uh, hydrogen. We have heat produced uh, as an intermediary, and so on. Uh, we move on to the next slide. On this one you can see some modern models and prototypes of agricultural robots the vast majority of these robots are produced uh, as pilot uh, ones they are not large scale uh, they are not produced on large scale so here you can find fully autonomous tractors uh, by John Deere, case uh, IH, and a significant share or portion of scientists and technology uh, uh, engineers work in, uh, in their uh, niche um, sector, so to say. One of the first robots, agricultural robots, Hortibot, uses this um, proprietary platform to fight, uh, to, to control uh, weeds. Bosch and Amazon produced this, uh, developed and produced this robot for uh, agriculture. Next slide, please. There are also smaller machines, smaller robots. For example, a Lady Bird and uh, Ripa are produced in Australia. They are based on renewables. You can see it. Uh, you can see these solar panels installed on the, on the top of the robots. They're mostly used to uh, control weeds. Oz Dino, uh, as well as um, many other robots produced by Oz are used for sowing and weed control. You can see some specific uh, robots uh, for uh, harvesting, uh, for uh, managing uh, vineyards and so on. Here you see Agbot 2 based on module principles. It has two um, movable modules uh, on the left and on the right. They are integrated by a, a platform. And thanks to this design, uh, the width uh, is adjustable according to the distance between row, rows. On the top right corner, you can see this uh, weed control robot fully based on solar energy. And other robots are seen just below this robot. They mechanically uproot weeds. 
Thorvald II is another interesting robot. It's um, it has module design. Uh, you can use uh, numerous modules uh, according to the crop you are managing uh, in, at a particular moment of time. We often hear a question about drones. Why would we use um, uh, like uh, land-based uh, uh, robots if for uh, spraying uh, herbicides and pesticides if we can use airborne uh, drones? I am convinced that uh, from the perspective of precision, um these land robots are far better but of course we can predict and anticipate that flying uh, robots these drones will also be widely used what kind of benefits or advantages do they have mm, it's quite obvious there is no contradiction or a competition between uh, land and air robots, they have to complement each other. What kind of modern trends do we see in uh, agricultural uh, robot engineering? First of all, it's uh, increasing the share of renewables, um, digitalization of all the processes, increasing the share of precision farming, uh, increasing the uh, level of um, autonomy, as well as uh, artificial intelligence. We can see more and more smaller robots. Uh, module design is another trend and uh, ex extensive um, scope of use for uh, the modern uh, ro robots, as, as well as many other trends. In my view, um, what th th there are the following important parameters for uh, robots, agricultural ro robots. Uh, uh, first of all, it's weight and uh, dimensions, size. You can see this table here with the uh, two categories of robots depending on their size. Uh, and the last, uh, the bottom line of this uh, table is about the time frame within which a robot can work autonomously. Uh, look at the top, uh, at the bottom right uh, a cell, uh, half an hour is uh, quite a sm uh, short period of time, but still it might be useful. Next slide. Here you can see uh, different concepts or models of uh, weed control in uh, robot engineering. Uh, one of them is very similar to the model we are using in our uh, model of robots. There are robots that are autonomously moving along the alongside the rows. They differentiate between uh, the crop plants and weeds. They are working on renewable sources of energy. And there is one more distinguishing uh, trade or quality of, of, of this concept we use. So let me say here that uh, designing robots in agriculture is now not only uh, tackling the problems of weed control. On the right hand side, you can see here a robot that is uh, produced for harvesting fruit. One more uh, aspect of weed control in uh, with the use of robots uh, is um, 
artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is quite important here. Uh, a lot of scientists and engineers are focusing on this um, task, uh, differentiating, uh, uh, detecting and differentiating uh, different types of uh, species so that the, the job of weed control could be done properly. Um, it's an important thing to say for a robot to say which plant is a weed and which is um, a good thing, a, plant, a crop plant. Next slide. Uh, modern robots are already better than um, human eye because uh, and, and it's going to be uh, even better in the future. Sensor used sensors used in these robots can work in different spectra of light. You can now look at the summary of advantages and disadvantages of uh, these um, robots. There are multispectra, hyperspectra uh, camera, and thermal cameras. Um, apart from uh, green and red spectrum cameras. Th these technologies uh, enable, rob uh, ena enable us to produce robots that are far better at detecting and uh, differentiating between uh, harmful and useful plants than a uh, uh, human being. So uh, we have to try and be as precise as we can in uh, uproot, uprooting uh, weeds. Uh, and it, yeah, in the past, we used very simple tools. Now we are moving to um, high precision robots in this um, field. Recently, we have been able to see the trend of um, patenting the uh, robots in agriculture. There is this eSpaceNet system uh, and uh, it uh, gives this uh, graph on the slide. And here we can also see interesting um, infographics about what kind of solutions are being patented nowadays in the world. Figure one shows for example, a situation when an autonomous machine number three uh, is uh, is situated or located close to the land plot. Uh, it um, analyzes, assesses the plot. It uh, transfers the data to the cloud storage, uh, where it's further further analyzed. So it's like a collective work of several robots. They are being coordinated for the best result. Next slide. There are a lot of machines that are patented as agricultural robots. Uh, first of all, they are autonomous. They don't have uh, uh, platforms, they do have cameras, um, manipulators, these robotic hands, uh, and their structure is quite uh, clear. Our concept of weed control robots, uh, which is named Fleabot system, is based on the following. There is uh, this uh, trailer that can deliver dozens or more robots to the field and uh, several aerodrones, aerodrones. This uh, trailer can also deliver a local uh, radio detectors uh, which help with the coordination uh, the, the, of works. The system works like this. It receives the task, this 
a trailer arrives at the target area it's um, it stabilizes then the air drones it's fig uh, figure two on the picture they um, sensor the area and transfer the data uh, to the server these robots uh, can also serve as uh, means of transport they can uh, bring or deliver these radios and, and uh, put them in the corners of the land plot they create um, coordinates for the rest of the machines the core of the system is fleabot robots it's number four on this picture they receive commands from the trailer they process the commands each robot moves to the uh, designated um, part of the land plot they move alongside the rows and do their job by tracking uh, the crops or identifying any weeds and when it identifies any weeds it issues a command to uh, pull this weed out by one of the two means uh, that this apparatus can achieve first wave is the first way is the chemical one when you have a nozzle that is uh, uh, squirts a precise stream or dose of a herbicide herbicide uh, by destroying only the weed uh, item the second way is the energetical one uh, when you burn the weeds out with a laser. Another way is also viable, a mechanical one, but in this model of this specific robot, we um, for now refrained from using this method. As this method, the mechanical one, it makes our device robot uh, more expensive. Considering that this concept uh, uses a swarm of robots, a large number of such robots, uh, then we set a goal to create a device, an apparatus that is uh, uh, that costs as uh, low as possible, so that this it doesn't become a very expensive toy, but rather uh, being one of the cheapest uh, devices ever, if possible. Next slide, please. I've mentioned before that the basis for such a robot, the system, uh, the system is based on a robot, and the typical task of, for such a robot robot uh, could look something like this: move out to a certain uh, point uh, with coordinates identified by the central control system, start motion along uh, a row uh, by and while observing the, the state of crops and uh, streaming this video to, to the central server. This can be done autonomously and uh, no central control is needed. Once weeds are identified and uh, maintaining uh, coordinates and uh, a destruction or uh, control method uh, of a weed, uh, conduct uh, control by a chemical or energetical way, then continue the movement uh, to complete the mission, uh, or uh, after uh, the supply, the supply of energy or herbicides is all, is uh, down, then to come back to the base, to the mothership uh, or the trailer. I've also mentioned uh, uh, the supplies. Once a robot is done working with one or two rows, uh, the robot can come back to the uh, mothership, the trailer. Uh, and then automatically uh, recharge the accumulator or change the uh, swap out the battery for a better one, then resupply with new chemical uh, chemical substance, and then to carry on with the next mission or carry on with this same mission. 
this allows us to make the device as cheap as possible, the robot as cheap as possible, because you don't have to have a big battery with you to for this robot to work autonom autonomously. And this is the strong side, the benefit of this robot. In this regard, it's uh, very similar to a home uh, uh, vacuum cleaner robot. Uh, that robot works for an hour and then goes to the base station to recharge. In our case, to avoid the wasting any time, this system uh, is capable of uh, automatically swap out batteries. Another feature of this robot is the global is a positioning system uh, in the coordinate system provided by the by the uh, mothership. So that there's a starting point, the base return point. Uh, there's also a video monitoring. Uh, it, the video monitoring system with the streaming to the central server. The capability of motion along uh, uh, a row uh, autonomously, uh, targeting devices uh, uh, to uh, root out any weeds, and uh, coordinates are provided from the server. We also looked in the concept of this device uh, to minimize, with the from the point of view of minimizing uh, the number of wheels and the control uh, units on the on this robot. Uh, our first route, uh, our first robot, Fleabot 1, Hortibot, and Bonnie Rob, other robots, used a four wheel drive and four turning wheels. So we needed at least uh, nine, at least eight electric motors for this robot to maneuver. This robot, this approach, uh, allows for the robot to be the most maneuverable because the robot can turn in place, can move forward, move backwards. But this is the most complex con uh, this solution in terms of control, and uh, it's the most expensive one. AGBot 2 has uh, two turning wheels and two drive wheels. It has uh, intermediate uh, manageable complexity and, com and uh, costs, but low maneuverable. Fleabot 2.0, uh, that is uh, in the green uh, frame, uh, it contains uh, two. Uh, contains two driving wheels and one support wheel. Uh, so we only need two electric motors. That is the minimal amount of motors available. And this this uh, solution, this approach uh, provides for high maneuverability and low cost, but compared to the first option, to the very first one, it has a lower maneuverability, of course. Next slide, please. We were also looking for a certain design, and uh, in this slide, you can see this. These are the work, the works of my students, to create the first uh, design of this robot and how it uh, transformed with time from uh, such a car-like uh, silhouettes to something that is mostly that most like mostly looks like an Agbot Bot Two, and the image itself demonstrates uh, Fleabot uh, 2.0. In the design of this agricultural robot, we use the uh, Tesla Cybertruck uh, elements of design. So sharp lines, futuristic uh, in, uh, exterior, cameras that look like uh, eyes on this robot. The next slide, please. Also, we developed and uh, documented a system uh, that is called Fleabot system. We've identified all its components, uh, all its uh, autonomous power supply systems. That includes batteries, controllers, and solar panels. Also the vehicle platform that includes the chassis to uh, driving wheels, the tilt sensors, angular central sensors, gearbox, and one support vehicle. All of that uh, is connected to the control system. There is a data exchange system. There is a chemical uh, tool to uh, pull weeds. There is the Im imagery system, uh, energetical system, and uh, all the all these elements are joined by uh, uh, streams of power, informational streams, control streams that are also uh, transferred to the corresponding server. Next slide, please. This is how the design of our robot looks like. 
in the upper part, we can see solar panels and a, the, the tank for the chemical. The robot has two cameras uh, identified by the number 19 that provides for binocular sight, which allows us to very accurately identify distance to a certain object. There are also cameras that rotate into uh, planes, uh, vertical and horizontal plane. We've also added nozzles to uh, export uh, to squirt the chemical and also a device to uh, hold uh, the laser with the uh, the energetic method of uh, uh, eliminating weeds. We've optimized these uh, solutions because uh, with the having those drives uh, in, integrated into the eyes, we also have the targeting systems, both for the nozzle and for the laser to uh, then target the, the weed that needs to be eliminated. All the control blocks are located in the central part of our uh, machine, our device. And uh, identification of distance uh, to the object that needs to be eliminated, to the target, is, is conducted very easily. Uh, with the A, you can see that that's the target. If you have two axes of those cameras pointing at the target, uh, we have pretty basic uh, formulas to identify, to calculate uh, uh, distances B and C. And then depending on uh, what method are we going to use to eliminate this weed, uh, we'll be able to use that. Having uh, coax, having uh, the camera and the optical and the chemical uh, devices being coaxial, we'll be able to adjust our targeting accordingly. And plus for the chemical, you need to uh, foresee the target the target angle or the vertical angle that uh, raises the uh, stream of the chemical to, to make sure it reaches the actual target. We've uh, developed uh, the algorithms of uh, a control and also of uh, image processment processing. I'm not going to go into details on those algorithms, but in any case, uh, I'll stop on the uh, chart on the right hand side. You can see that certain elements of the system is located on the server and it processes the image, while the other part is, uh, is located on the device itself. On each of the robots that send this data to the server to be processed. Uh, to identify which of plants are harmful, which plants are desirable. Uh, it also issues, uh, the server also issues tasks and conducts targeting to eliminate uh, the corresponding uh, weed target. Next slide, please. This is the concept and the robot, the, their exterior. Uh, it's a sketch, a model, and uh, we managed to find a, a, a solution that is both uh, attractive, uh, uh, that it was attractive in terms of appearance and uh, very effective. We have two driving wheels and one support wheel. Uh, it that facilitates uh, very accurate, uh, very accurate. It has a lot of sensors that facilitate very accurate uh, control of this robot. Uh, next slide, please. And on the left-hand side, uh, left upper corner, you can see the 3D model of this uh, Fleabot 2.0 robot. We have a prototype uh, manufactured in our laboratory. Certain elements required uh, pr producing manufacturing uh, details, uh, parts that are original, and we use the 3D uh, printing for that in our laboratory. Next slide, please. These, these are the pictures of the prototype of our robot. We have the chassis 
here. We have the exterior uh, devices. We have the battery. We have the driving wheels. Uh, we have all the gearboxes and uh, motors, uh, surveillance cameras, uh, the laser, the nozzle, the pump, and also the tank for the chemical liquid. And on the next slide, all the same, but without the exterior panels. Here you can see all, his, all its elements in more details. Uh, we can see uh, the elements that hold the cameras. You can see the uh, tank for the liquid, chemical liquid, and uh, the system itself. Uh, the elimination system, it's integrated with the surveillance cameras, the uh, devices, the methods themselves. And our students work uh, together. We've developed this uh, mobile platform system integrated with the surveillance systems. And to produce original parts we use the additive technologies on the at the next stage we are this is what we're working on we are working on uh, automating uh, the control of this robot there are groups in our university that are very well versed in uh, uh, neuro uh, neuro uh, networks, neural networks, and uh, we've joined our efforts to implement the, the implement the task of identifying weeds and to create such a developed, uh, such a decentralized uh, control system for a swarm of robots. Again, this is a 3D model of implementation of our project. This is the concept of how we see the future of uh, weed control. Uh, 30, 50 years ago to control uh, weeds in uh, our collective farms, uh, they used to deploy a, brigade, a group of people uh, on a lorry, and then they, they would uh, spend a day uh, pulling weeds in one field and then do the same in a different field. This is conceptually the same, but... Uh, you just you just need one person to drive this uh, mothership truck out to the field and then deploy these robots that will be able to autonomously deliver the same amount of work uh, that uh, used to use human labor, a very extensive one. Uh, okay, this is I think this is us done, and uh, I think we all should trust all the heavy pulling to the robots while, while st sticking to intellectual work and uh, we'll be able to eat some clean products. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vitaly. And we're now, again, happy to work on questions. And there have already been two questions from participants. And please, um, Pablo, also help me if I lose something in translation. But I think the first question concerns a worry. What happens um, if the robot, for example, does not recognize um, or cannot tell apart meats from crops, for example? So how big is actually the problem of meat destruction, especially in the later development phases of crops? Have you had any experiences with that? Thanks for your question. It's a very interesting one. And if you can remember the, the chart where we had uh, four kinds of cameras that uh, are mountable on this uh, robot. Those are infrared, multi-spectre, visible uh, spectrum. All the, 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 this device only has, the current device only has one RGB camera, but nothing prevents us from using more cameras. And all of that would, uh, allow us to reduce the number of errors to the bare minimum, barely any errors. Also, 
when we're talking about uh, the need for controlling weeds, our task is formulated in a slightly different way. We need to identify the uh, crop itself and then to destroy everything else. So we need to train our neural network to identify the good plant, the crop, uh, to make sure it doesn't touch it. And then uh, eliminate everything else. The main task is to uh, not uh, squirt with chemicals or not burn the crop itself. Of course, these days, nowadays, uh, there is no 100% guarantee of uh, eliminating all the weeds. Even the most advanced companies, the big ones that are uh, developing this issue, but step by step, and uh, trust me, they're very rapidly. They very rapidly increase the efficiency of uh, such a weeds control uh, with robots rather than with uh, human labor. I also wanted to add, in our project, uh, Fleabot 2.0, uh, there is a device for home use to uh, control weeds on a loan. It's essentially almost certainly a home vacuum cleaning robot that is uh, patrolling the lawn and then comes back to get recharged and then comes back uh, outside to the lawn to control uh, the area itself. It, you don't even need uh, any sort of mothership for that, any sort of big truck, big platform. You can only, you can only use the autonomous robot. Thank you. You're muted. Thank you. And there have been two more questions that related to how well um, the ro robotic technology can manage to face unexpected obstacles. So what happens, for example, um, if the robot has to unexpectedly turn? Thanks for the question. We haven't uh, looked into this matter yet. The system is uh, very well, in is, works very well in terms of trans terrain traverse. The positioning system, uh, it's very capable, even, even when a bot was uh, entangled with something or just spinning, spinning its wheels, uh, uh, it worked still very well, it pulled forward. In terms of uh, negotiating obstacles, specifically with the aerial drones, we can use those before deploying, before deploying our bots into the field. We can use aerial drones to create a 3D map and the server can plan a task in such a way for them to by bypass any old obstacles. For instance, there is a huge uh, boulder in the field. It can just, the server can just task it, uh, task the bots to uh, bypass this boulder. Uh, maybe we'll be able to implement this further, but we haven't looked into this in this project. Thank you. Thank you. And I think there has been another question in the chat. Maybe Pablo, you can help with translating. Okay, so the question, uh, have you used in practice uh, any of the robots that you've uh, used in the uh, introduction? If I understand this correctly. No, the, quest, the answer is no. We haven't used any of those uh, uh, specimens. We only studied descriptions. We studied video materials, but mostly these robots are produced abroad and we are slightly limited uh, in, in certain ways, limited in uh, familiarizing ourselves with such robots. There was another question regarding the capability, off-road capability of these robots, whether it's capable uh, of going when the, the rows of culture uh, become more, more and more uh, close to each other. Okay, uh, we haven't looked into this matter yet. The model that I showed you, it's a scale model. So its size 
is not uh, does not correspond to the real needs. The real size has to be uh, that the height has to be slightly taller than a chair that we sit on. But we were doing this, uh, this is just our initiative. So we produced the robot that is slightly smaller. There is no problem of uh, get given any off-road capability. It's just a mechanical task. For us, the key focus is to optimize the structure of this robot and to minimize all the elements uh, that these uh, uh, robots will comprise of. Because this solution has to be efficient and the swarm of robots has to be affordable in price so that it's not just an expensive uh, toy, but it's something official, efficient. And to improve uh, off-road capability, it's a simple task. We can uh, use mechanical methods for that. Thank you. Thank you too. I have another question related to the usage of those agricultural bots in ecological. Uh, and even like family size, uh, uh, family size uh, allotments, gardens, whether those unifunctional bots, uh, whether it's feasible to produce such unifunctional uni, 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 unifunctional bots that, that are only capable to eliminate weeds to control weeds, uh, as opposed to multifunctional bots. So, can there be a situation in the agriculture when there's a an uh, a multifunctional bot that will be able to conduct multiple operations, but uh, it, it's gonna be very expensive, but it's gonna make all the operations very uh, affordable and that would lead to uh, oligarchization of uh, agriculture. Maybe, maybe uh, this idea, uh, we came uh, across this idea when we were talking with uh, uh, agricultural uh, companies they were telling us that there is a huge problem and that requires automati automation. Maybe with time, we'll, or even most likely, there are, there are going to be modular uh, models, modular concepts that we've, uh, that for, for weeds control, you can use them for specifically one task, but then for uh, when, when you need to harvest uh, a plant, so harvest, we need to harvest, you can use other uh, arms or control modules that are helpful in that task. At this point, we are focused on specifically the weed, uh, weeds control task. Thank you. Thanks, another question if that's okay. How, when you're planning uh, diversified uh, cropping, how do you uh, take into account their integration with the robot, uh, robot technologies with robotization? Is it not going to contradict the principles of ecological, uh, ecological uh, cul cul cultivation? How do you, we we need to use the method the, the of covered covered uh, we need the, we need the soil to be covered at all times not just the bare one uh, that is easy for a robot to traverse. Of. Look, it's just a visualization so that you can see the rows better. The robot doesn't need a bare soil to be able to move. Uh, the robot that uh, you, you can deploy on lawns, uh, as we mentioned before, for instance, it comes across uh, some sort of a uh, flower that shouldn't be there uh, to uh, burn it with a laser or with a chemical. Uh, the, our robots are also capable of that. Whether it uh, corresponds to all the identified the, the 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 demands that you mentioned, whether whether it resolves all the problems that you mentioned, I'm not ready to answer that. But I'm not very well versed very well versed in agricultural engineering the problem is in that i myself a an, a mechanical engineer by by trade by background and uh, i can talk about mechatronic systems and different functions but uh, 
when I'm going to work with experts in the agricultural field, I'll be able to refine this project. Thank you for the question. 